if you could just start by introducing yourself and telling us a little yeah, bit about how sure. you got into the arts. For sure. So my name is Marilena and I own Wellware, um, Wellware Murals. And like I was saying before, I mean, I, I went to art school here in Canada, in Ontario, and uh, didn't really plan on getting into painting murals. I actually fell into jewelry design, absolutely loved it. Did it for about five years after I graduated. And then I got pregnant with my daughter and decided to paint a mural in her room. And that's basically how it started. So I painted this mural in her room. This was 22 years ago. And then of course, everybody was like, hey, you do this? <laughs> and uh, I was like, no, but do you want a room done? <laughs> So that's how it kind of started. And then it really took off after that. I then had my second child. And after my second child, I kind of decided, this is such a cool job. Like, let's turn this into a business. So that's what happened. I ended up turning this mural business into a full-time job and have been very lucky ever since. I absolutely <laughs> love doing what I do. And, you know, now I can share things on Instagram and on Facebook, all the social media platforms. So it's been really good. That's awesome. So who do you or what kind of murals do you do re regularly? Do you mostly do like kids rooms or what? Yeah, so I think what I had decided to do back then when I started, I had a little bit of practice doing, let's say about 10 nurseries because I had had kids, my friends, friends had kids. So I, I kind of had made the decision then let me just pick something that I can specialize in. And so I did start specializing in nurseries. And I, that really took off. And for years, all I did was nurseries. And then I would say like 10 years into the business, I started thinking, I guess I could paint anywhere. And then it started rolling. I started doing restaurants and businesses and offices and so on and so forth. And that's what brings us where we are today. Yeah, that's awesome. And you have recently started doing decals. Tell me I more have. about that. That's, that's another interesting story too. So, um, in the past, before social media, I used to actually do a couple of trade shows here at, in Toronto. And that's how I got my business. And one day at the trade show, I would say this was about five, six years ago, a, a lady came up to me and said, do you sell decals? And I was like, no, I paint murals. And she's like, well, why don't you sell decals? And, and that just kind of stuck in my head. And I went home that night and I said to my husband, this lady asked me if I sold decals. Like, why would she ask me if I sell decals? I paint murals, you know? And uh, she ends up saying to me, oh, well, my husband looks at me and he says, well, then just make decals. And I was like, oh, like, really? Like, should I look into it? So I actually had started it about five years ago, but I looked into making these, like, huge decals, which were replicas of my original murals. And mm -hmm. it did go very well. I ended up selling them all on Amazon. But then I found out that the business side of that is very difficult to keep up at that point in my life with a family and with painting full time. So I, after a year or two that I had been doing them, I kind of let it go on the back burner a little because I thought to myself, there's just so much going on. It, it takes a lot of work. And it's just been recently, the last, during COVID, I would say, because we got locked down a little bit, I brought up the idea again. And this time I did it a little different. I took on a whole other um, idea where now they're much smaller scale. They're hand painted like the original ones. And I'm loving the way they look. I actually have one here. It's just like one of my leaf ones. Oh, it's so, so much bigger than I thought. Yeah, well, this one's the biggest one I have. It's only about okay. I would say 12 inches. But like, you know, there there's some smaller ones, but they're just really cute and they look really pretty and they're easy to put on. And you still have that look of like hand painted, which I love, right? Yeah. So yeah, we'll so see how I, it goes. You just started have, off with that. <laughs> I have so many questions about that. So you held it up, and it has like a, a white background. Does it stick on with the clear, yeah, so these are, or does it white? This specific fabric that I got, because I, I tested out a bunch of them, I love this stuff. So this stuff is removable and reusable. Mm. You can stick them on the wall, take them off the wall, uh, replace them. Like if you put it on wrong, uh, it comes off really easy off the backing, as you can see here. So you just peel it off. And it's this really beautiful, like thick fabric, like, you know, so it, um, it, it doesn't leave any bubbles and it's easy for you to take off. And what I love about them is if they're moving, so this is great for renters or, you know, if you're just going somewhere temporary, then you could just peel it off, yeah. 
peel it off, put it back on the backing and take it with you to the next home. I would say you could use them like 50 times. You know? Really? Like I, yeah, I've gone back and forth, peeling them off, peeling them off just to test them and they stick totally fine. As long as the backing doesn't get dirty, right? Yeah. Like, so if you keep them nice and clean, they and they look great. They look like they've been hand painted. So That's they're awesome. Nice. Well, that, I'm gonna try to, there we go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're, they're a lot of fun. So basically I paint a sample and then I get uh, like really good photos taken of them. And then we clean them up um, on the computer and then we go ahead from there and we print them and we test them when we print them. We see if the color works and all of that. Right. Yeah. So, I love, yeah. I love that. So what kind of material are you using for the decals? Mm hmm. The decals are, it's, um, I can't remember the name of the actual um, material, but it, it's, it's a removable, reusable peel, like vinyl, but it's, it's fabric quality. It's almost like a weave, like a woven. So they're not shiny or reflective. They look very natural on the wall, which is really nice. And the cool thing is when you go to a printer, uh, someone who prints, they have all these samples for you to test out. So I had brought a whole bunch of samples home and tested them out to see which ones I liked. Okay, that's awesome. How so? You paint the the leaf, and then do you do you take a photo of it, or does the printer? Yeah, well, lately I've been taking a photo, but I think I'm going to start getting them professionally done, like bringing them into a studio so that the lighting is good. Um, and uh, and then they print them, and then I test them out the size wise, see which size I like, and then I figure out price wise how many I'm selling them for. So right now I'm selling them in groups of like eight or ten which is a nice amount. So if someone buys two packs of something, they can decorate pretty much like the back of a, a bedroom wall, right? Like let's say where their bed is or where the crib is or, or a washroom wall, like that covers enough surface that way. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And how, how much, if you don't mind me asking, how much does it cost to get one printed or do you do it in a batch? Yeah, so I'm or... selling them right now. The, like, for example, the rainbows, those are really popular. Those are about eight inches wide by six inches high. And they go for, I'm selling them for $40 for a pack of 10. So they're really, you know, they're, they're cost, you know, effective and, uh, and people like them. And then to, to print them, obviously, they're less. Um, and then it obviously, it also depends on how many you're printing. So the more you print, the less it costs you, right? Okay. So if they start selling like tons, then I can lower the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're basically just printing them on demand. So if someone yeah, right has now a... I'm printing them on demand, because I really just launched it June 1st. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I started it. So you can check them out on my website on walmart.ca, or you could check them out on, um, uh, yeah, on the website, it'll take you to the link. Because in, in Toronto, I actually have them in a store as well, so that if people want to go see them, they can go check them out at the store. Oh, so cool. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes for you because I am personally, I, I saw that idea and I'm like, oh, maybe I should do that. And so that's why I'm very interested in what you're doing. Well, that's the cool thing about us artists, right? Like we don't have to specifically stay in one. I mean, it's already difficult enough to make it a full-time job being an artist. So yeah. if there's ways around, and you know that, because I, I follow your company, and uh, if there's ways around of making money in other ways, it's it's great, right, for us. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just like You're processing. You're just liking the decal stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like processing all of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is there a certain, so say someone wanted to make the decals, so I guess their first step would be just to contact a, a, a local printer, probably, instead of an online one? Is that what you did? Yeah, I don't use online. I have a yeah. local printer that I get to go and feel the material. And like the first time he printed, he said, come over, let's look at it. Tell me if you like the color. Tell me, like the first material we printed on, I didn't like at all. So I was like, okay, this is a no let's try something else, you know? So yeah, I liked working with local. I mean, I guess Pete, you could ship them out and see, but if you get to test the material, it'd be better, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 
I definitely agree because I print local as well. And just yeah. getting the like, you know, I, sometimes I'll text my printer guy. I'm like, Hey, can you, can you get this, you know, to me in two weeks or whatever? It's just, it, yeah, exactly. it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a lot more personal. And I, as you were talking about doing big murals, I've tried to do like really big giant, like sticker wings and they're, they're yeah. really big and they're, they're costly. And they, I mean, they That's cost right. me like over a hundred bucks to get printed. And I was yes. like, ah, oh, that would to mark it up. To and then you're selling them for like 300 and then they're, yeah. they're great. For me, I, because I was with Amazon the first time I did the decals, I was shipping them to the U.S. And the shipping alone was like just crazy because they were huge. Like they were like the size of a mural, right? So I, I was doing like it's dinosaurs and like, you know, that kind of stuff. So they were just so big. It just, it was great when I was in it for like that year or two, but it just, I just realized it was just too much for me to to deal with. Maybe if I had like passed it off to someone and said, here's my design, you worry about the selling and all of that. But for me to like, you know, having my kids and, and running this mural business and doing the decals was a little bit too much. So now I'm hoping these smaller ones, I can, I can handle it a little bit easier. I think that I figured that out. So that took me a little while to figure out, but I figured out that uh, selling the smaller ones is easy to ship, put them in an envelope and ship them. Uh, that, uh, it's just saves a lot of time and money. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And like, and with the shipping aspects, shipping anything flat is just <laughs> amazing. But once you do a yes. canvas, like having a box, I'm like, Oh yes. yeah. Okay. Yes. Cause yes. My immediate thought was from like from shipping, you know, so many prints and whatnot is, man, do I really want to give myself another shipping task? But uh, as you mentioned, you know, putting it in, in, in an envelope is so easy to ship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No that way. was one of my motivations, right? For these new decals. It was a, a big part of it. I was like, how can I still give the illusion of a really nice mural in someone's home, but keep them in the small scale? And the fun thing about these ones that I've created is that you can mix and match. So you can take the monstera leaf and I have a smaller one and you can add a lemon or a flamingo and it's such a cute little setup, right? <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it'll be a learning experience. So we'll see how this year goes with them. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, like well, giving myself opportunities though to grow, right? And to try new things. Yeah. So. Yeah, this definitely just because a lot of people will say no to like a a thousand dollar mural in in a nursery, but people can say yes to you know ten stickers for for forty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. I'm yeah. selling them for forty, but even if you bought two packs and you spent a hundred dollars or eighty dollars, you know, like it's people. Yeah, I do find like in my case here in Toronto, painting murals is not an issue. I could be busy all the time. I don't. I'm assuming it's because I've been in the business for a long time. So people know me. Um, price usually isn't even an issue. It doesn't matter what I tell people. They know my work. So they trust that it'll be a beautiful mural. Um, but I do want to give the opportunity for a lot of people who don't have homes that they want to paint on their walls, or don't have you know, or live in a condo or rent an apartment, and they are not allowed to paint the walls, right? But still have a beautiful room. Yeah, you know, yeah. I love this idea. It's just it's just thinking of, you know, different ways to do it. But to do it the same way. I, I'm all I'm all in this. I'm actually might go have a conversation with my printer here very <laughs> you soon. You call me later. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm already thinking I'm like, oh, I could do like little clouds and people could yeah. you know, print out clouds. And okay. And okay. you're still giving the opportunity for the client to be creative, right? Mm -hmm. Like that they can, I'm giving you a couple of ideas, like my antlers and the triangles look super cute together. But you could, if you have another idea, put the triangles and the circles together or the you know whatever the case may be right so whatever yeah. you feel like I want to give them a couple of ideas but then just play with it and have fun you know yeah yeah for sure uh, I, I love this okay all right well back on to your mural career I think a lot of people listening want to know how you built this you know this mural career that where you know you can keep busy all the time because that's the dream right you just yeah not, I, not mean, having I, can, I don't know like I I think like I had a crazy winter, I would say from October to March, I was painting almost every day. And I haven't really experienced that. But I was under the assumption that maybe because of COVID, people were home and just staring at their walls and thinking, well, I'm not, you know, doing much else. So maybe let's get something on the wall, you know, and I do have a lot of people that follow me. So they see the work. And uh, I think once 
they talk to you. Uh, one thing that's been really interesting about COVID is I used to do home visits. So I used to do a, a free home estimate. I would come out to the home in the GT, like in the Toronto area. And I would give you a quote, look at the walls, show you my portfolio. But ever since COVID hit, we've been, I've been doing video calls. And I've been finding that video calls actually are fantastic because the people get, the client gets to meet you quickly, like a five minute video call. They, they just want to meet you personally. You know, I, I show them, I pull up my iPad and I'm like, do you like this? Do you like this? And then I'll be like, show me your room that you're thinking. I, I do major still in residential. Like I always, I'm 90% of my work is still in residential. I do do offices, restaurants. I don't do too many outdoor murals, but this is my niche. So if I do residential, that's what I do. I, I have a lot of calls for that, but people are really loving the video call. I get to meet them. And then usually once I meet them and talk to them, they book me. Like, it's not like, you know, it doesn't, it's not like they leave me hanging or, and if they do, it's for a good reason. But um, otherwise I usually book them, you know? So it's, uh, and I think the more work you put out and the more you show your work, uh, I know you're on TikTok too. I've been having a lot of fun with TikTok. <laughs> it's fun to, to do some videos and show how fun it is, like from before and after, right? And people really love that, really love that. And I'm learning too that social media is the only form of advertising. Yeah. It really, yeah, it really is. I mean, where before I used to do all these, these shows, I don't need to do them anymore. It's been about six, seven years that I don't do them anymore. And I just do social media and that's really all. As long as you take a little bit of time, I try to do one or two days a week, really sit down and create some content and then uh, you're, I'm pretty much good. So yeah. that's the way it go. But yeah, I've been really lucky, but I, I do love what I do. I do love what I do. And I think that that's a, a big thing. If you love what you do, I mean, I tell artists, I have a few artists that like worked with me and then they went on their own. And I've told them, if you love it, just do it. Just do it and worry about all the other stuff later. You know, worry about the business side and the charging this and tax and all of that. Worry about that later. For now, just paint. Just do it. Like, if you don't do it, if you don't start, you'll never, you'll never know, right? Yeah, so true. We have a, a question here from Amanda. She's actually in the Artist Academy, and she says, uh, "Do you have any advice on outreach? So, in the beginning, when people aren't coming to you, do you have any advice on getting clients of maybe, yeah, you know, I mean, pitching?" I can honestly say, twenty years ago, there was no social media when I started. And yeah. so, and because I was specializing, I wanted to specialize in baby and nurseries. I went to a couple of furniture stores, like baby furniture stores. I walked in, I showed them the five or six murals that I had done. And I said, can I paint on one of your walls? And they were like, of course you can. Like they were thinking <laughs> like, can you do this Winnie the Pooh or whatever it was back then, you know? And I was like, sure, I'll paint it. And I, I said to them, I'm just gonna write my like name at the bottom, you know, if anybody asks. And I couldn't believe how many people called me from going to buy baby furniture, you know? Um, so like, like back then that worked for me. I did, you know, a handful of baby furniture stores because I thought, well, people have to go to the furniture store to buy their kids furniture. When they go, they'll see a little setup and it worked for me. But I mean, I tell people all the time when you're starting, do murals in your home, take lots of photos, do lots of videos, do murals at your, I used to do it at my sister's house. I'd use her walls. I'd go to my sister's, do my nieces and nephews rooms, you know, and then just build a portfolio. And then once your portfolio is built, it's really right now, it's just all social media. It's showing a lot of photos, talking to a lot of people. I mean, in my case now, I've done so many murals that everybody refers me. I have, I had a client a couple of weeks ago that I had painted 10 years ago. And their friend was having a baby and they referred me. And I was like, that was 10 years ago. Like, you know, but they still refer me. So it, that's great for me. Like, I, I love that they still call me after so many years, right? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. do, do a video call and then just do stuff for free is where I, I mean, do stuff for like, you know, expo and there's so much like, 
bad name that people get with exposure. But what what you're saying is if you go pitch yourself, you know, to a, a high traffic area that has your perfect client and you do something for, for, for free or just like very yeah. low cost and it, there's just so much return on that. Yeah. I don't and, like doing anything. You, we have to make sure we tell our artists nowadays not to do things for free for big companies. That's yeah. Sure. But if you're doing something like it, the, where I did, I had just started out. I was literally doing it for a couple of months. And I really was serious about turning this into a business. And I had two little kids. So it was my motivation to be able to like, I wanted to work on my own, have my own company, work one or two days a week painting and still be able to take care of my kids. So that was my motivation for starting. And uh, everybody's motivation is different. I just got lucky that it turned into like, now that my kids are grown, I'm able to have this amazing job where I get to paint like for a living like I sometimes when I say it I still can't believe that I get to paint for a living you know (laughs) it's true right there's not many of us that that can say that but it's uh and and I love doing it right like there's there's never a day like I I hadn't painted for about a week I didn't have any murals booked and then when I went out to go paint I was like oh I miss this you know (laughs) like now if a week goes by I'm like oh I missed it you know so I I do I, I am very lucky that I, I get to paint all the time. It's it's great. Yeah, I it, get paid it, for it. <laughs> it. Exactly. Yeah, it is the best job ever. We just got yeah, back from a vacation. vacation, and it was vacations great and all. I mean, I was like itching to get back to murals, and so I even yeah. like when we came back on like a Friday, I had something booked on a Saturday, and I was like, I'll just go and just paint. And I was like, just being back in my element for yeah. that one day, it was like, man, <laughs> you don't yeah. realize like, and it's just it's just so good for your mental health too. It's so oh, good for yeah. mine, just like keeping busy and putting in a podcast or like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is people always ask me, can I play some music for you in the background? I'm like, no, this is my quiet time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> when, so you, like, you don't me, listen to anything. Yeah, because in my case, I have a very loud household. So when I, because I have three kids and a husband, so it's too many in the house. So when I, when I leave and I get to go paint for a couple hours, I, I love the silence, you know? So I'm like, people are like, can I play some music? And I'm like, nope. I'm good. This is like my, my quiet time, you know? So I yeah. do, I do love, uh, I love when I get to go out and, you know, just paint. So it's, it's great. It is great. Yeah. It was pretty great. That's awesome. Um, so do you get, do you get a lot of stuff from social media? Do you think it comes from like Instagram or Facebook or do, do you still, do you get a you lot know what? of I've been trying to tra- Yeah. I've been trying to track it lately just to see, I'm so surprised with how many uh, messages I do get from Facebook still. Um, I think it's because I have that niche of like the moms and the nurseries and um, the baby's rooms. There's a lot of mom groups. So what will happen is in a mom group, someone will say, um, does anybody know anyone who paints murals? And then somehow my name comes up in the conversation and then they send me a message. So I do still get a lot of messages on Facebook. Um, I don't use it personally anymore. I use it for business and it's been good. Uh, Instagram is phenomenal. Oh, did my daughter just say hi, mom? Look at yeah, that. I saw that, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> That's my little one. <laughs> so um, uh, I do, uh, I find Instagram is the best. Like right now for me, I find I can, the stories work, the reels work for me. Uh, TikTok's been a lot of fun. Like that's, I love TikTok for the videos. I do spend a little bit too much time on it, but, <laughs> but I do love it to create the videos. I've been having a lot of fun with that. And I do have a big following too, which is great. Right. Cause then, I mean, I think any, any content that people are going to see is good con is good. Right. It doesn't matter yeah. which way. Um, I do find also, I get a lot of messages from my website and I always ask people when they do contact me, how they found me. And some people are like, I just looked up murals in Toronto and your website came up. So that's good. And that's actually how the Property Brothers found me when I painted a mural for them. That was kind of cool. They just Googled murals in Toronto and I came up and they gave me a call and I've done five murals for them now, <laughs> five episodes. That's, so that's so cool. Great. Tell us about that. How, how was that? Yeah. Are they super nice? <laughs> oh my God. They are so so nice. They're, they're too nice. I tell them all the time. I'm like, you guys are really, like, really nice. But yes, they, I, it was about, 
I think five years ago, I did my first one with them and I was literally lying on the couch, answered my phone like, hi, like this. <laughs> and it was their, their director or producer. <laughs> and they're like, hi, this is uh, whatever. Do you, have you heard of the Property Brothers? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and they're like, we're looking for someone to paint a mural like tomorrow. I'm like, um, <laughs> like tomorrow in Toronto. <laughs> I was thinking, cause I didn't know where they were. And they're like, yeah, like tomorrow. And I'm like, uh, I guess, um, can you send me some idea? Like, well, what are we painting? <laughs> it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I didn't end up painting the next day, but I did meet them the next day. I met with the homeowner and we discussed what was going to happen. Uh, cause they always do a little filming before like a kind of intro. And then I painted a couple days later and it was like history after that. I got to know the guys. They're super nice. They've called me back for every time they come to Toronto to do a season, they call me for one of their rooms. So I just did one last year for them. So I, I think I've done four or five now for them, but it's, it, they're fun and it's amazing promotion for me. Like just posting that I did work for them has been phenomenal, right? Cause it oh, yeah. gives you a little credibility, I guess, or, but they're super nice. They're really nice guys. They, are so like, you know, the last time I went, I had my daughter with me so she could do some filming. They ended up talking to her for like an hour about university and, you know, where she should go and what she should do. And I'm like, um, are we, are we gonna film? <laughs> they're like talking away with her, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah, they're really, really, really nice guys. Really nice guys. And it's been uh, like an honor to work with them for the last uh, couple of years. They're great. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. Have you ever had a project go wrong? Like something just happened or? I was thinking about this and I, I haven't really had any horrible experiences. Sometimes you have bad experiences with your paint. Like I've learned a lesson of never painting acrylics on oil, base walls. <laughs> <laughs> That's a disaster. It peels right off. Uh, so like those are kind of things that you learn through experience, you know, like now I always 99% of the time the walls are latex. So you're okay to go ahead and paint, you know, acrylic on top. But um, that one time I just assumed it was latex. And when I went to paint the next day, it all peeled off. <laughs> so, I mean, like there's some things like that, but other than that, I've never really had, I mean, if anything, most clients are way happier about the outcome than they thought they were going to be, you know, yeah. like cause looking at photos never does justice to looking at the actual mural. And you know that too. Right? Doesn't matter how good our photos look, it's a hundred times better when you see it in life. Right? Yeah. So I think that the, I get that response all the time. Like people are like, your photos are so nice, but this is like so much better, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's always been really nice. But I mean, otherwise, I haven't really had any bad experiences. Yeah. So far. So let's see yeah. if that stays that way. <laughs> so far. Yeah. How do you price? That's like a, a you know, everybody does it differently. How, how do you price a job? Yeah. I do don't, you figure out? I, I've learned after all these years, how long a mural will take me. And I'm usually pretty bang on. I know it'll be five hours, six hours, seven hours. I might be off an hour, like if, if anything. So I like to do an hourly rate. I know what at this point of my career I'm worth. Um, but when I started, I, it was really difficult because I had no idea what to charge. You know, I used to think, well, will people pay two or three hundred dollars for a mural? Where now that same mural, I'm like, are you going to pay fifteen hundred dollars for that mural? You know, so I mean, I try to do between one hundred and fifty to two hundred an hour at this point, which is if I'm doing a mural in someone's home, that's like six hundred six hours. It'll be, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars. And I I. Um, I can do my murals pretty fast now. Like where I used to take a week to do a mural, I can do it in a day, you know? Yeah. So most of my murals are a day project in the residential homes. Uh, sometimes if the walls are full, then it's going to be more, right? But I've worked my way up and I'm not afraid at all to discuss price with clients anymore where it is daunting at the beginning yeah. because you, you don't have that confidence that, you do when you have experience, right? So yeah. now at this point, this is my price. I know you will get 100% quality if you want it. 
you can have it done. And if you don't, that's okay. Take, buy a decal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Buy a decal, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd love and I find that, that people really respect that, right? They respect the fact, I, my point in my career now, people respect the fact that I am an artist and you are paying for my work as an artist. I, you know, I'm not like a house painter that can charge per room. I can't do that. And I've never understood the square footage for me because my murals are so different. I could go into one room and paint one flower and one name, or like this week I have a mural where I'm painting eight superheroes, right? So I can't, I can't charge square footage. It doesn't work for me. The only time I charge square footage is if I'm doing a full finish. That's the only time. Like, so if I'm doing um, like a Venetian plaster or a marble wall or a, you know, a cement look, that's different that you can charge by square footage because it's kind of similar all throughout, right? But yeah. um, otherwise, when it comes to the murals, but I've, I've got it down pat, I know now, do you want a flower wall? You know, it's gonna cost you 600 to $800. Do you want uh, like the superheroes? Like they're gonna be two to $300 each one. So like you figure out how many you have and then, you know, whatever it is. So, but that's taken experience and years of painting, right? So, and also knowing what I'm worth, what I feel like I should get paid for the day. And there's people I'm sure who think less it works for them and more works for them, right? But for me and what I do in this city, because you also have to, pricing is different in every city, correct? Mm -hmm. Like you have to yeah. see what works in your city and what works in my city and, and so on and so forth, right? So yeah. you kind of play the, play the field and figure it out and, and then just go with it. Once you have experience, you really shouldn't have to argue your price no. at all. Yeah, no. exactly. So yeah. how, do you know how many people who like reach out to you to get like a price or whatnot? How many people typically hire you and how many people will like ghost or that you don't end up getting a job? At this point, if I talk to them and I have a video call, it's 99.9% .9 that they're going to do the mural with me. I love that. So everybody listening, just take that and just whatever you could do, get them yeah. on a video call. Yes. <laughs> if I, if I send a message back, and then they send me a message back and then we play back and forth. That's a 50, 50, right? Like, okay, yeah. But if I get them, if I go to their home or if I get them on a video call, it's 99% that I'm going to paint for them. Yeah. It's very rare. It, and if I'm not painting for them right, like within the next couple of weeks, they will definitely call me back, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Because I find that it's people still like the personability, like they like meeting someone and, you know, oh, there's Corrado. Hi, Corrado. He says amen to that. <laughs> I know. He's so great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Taryn, she, she's in the, in the Arts Academy too. She's been commenting. She's like, good to know. And that she also commented earlier. She's like, I love to see uh, inspiring mothers, you know, supporting their family with art. And I think that's really, that's yeah, really you know, awesome. You know what I do? I tell my kids all the time, because I have this issue that all three of my kids are artistic and none of them want to go into the arts. And I'm constantly <laughs> encouraging them. I'm like, why wouldn't you want to be, have a career like mom? And they're like, mom, that's not cool. I'm like, yes, it's cool. I have a cool job. They're like, okay, mom. But you know the way it is. They don't want to have anything to do with whatever you do, right? But I do <laughs> know I have three children who are super who are very artistic and they're all really smart two of them are in university one just finished but I'm okay with them not choosing it yet but I'm feeding the little seed to them because I have a feeling they're going to end up in the field one day or another <laughs> and I tell them all the time you don't have to paint murals I don't care if you don't paint murals but I know what being artistic does and I, I dislike the fact that it's not encouraged at schools anymore, right? And it's yeah. sad. My, my son said to me when he was choosing what university to go to, I said, you need to get into the field of art. I don't care if it's design, uh, whatever you do, figure it out. He didn't. He went another way. I said to him, I tell him every time, you know, you're going to come back and work in the field of art. So just be prepared. They're going to do all this university and then you're going to end up in the field of art, which is fine. You take it whichever way you want to take it, but you're going to end up. <laughs> so That's... I, 
That's so great because a lot of artists that I know that a lot of artists come into the artist Academy. They're like, you know, I've always known that I liked art, but then I chose nursing or I chose, yeah. you know, teaching or I, ch I chose a different profession. And they're like, I'm burnt out. Now I'm back to art. And that's but why, I, why do they not go into the arts? Because it's a difficult field to work full time. Yeah. Right? And it, it's not like a normal job. It's not that's like a right. nine to five yeah. thing. It's not. That's, it's a, a, that's what my son kept saying to me. He kept saying to me, Mom, you are the only mother who tells their kid to go into the art field. <laughs> and I'm like, because I know it'll make you happy. Yep. <laughs> oh, so my gosh. That's, that's awesome. But, so yeah. what, one question. So I get this a lot from students because, you know, after you've been in it several years, like you, you can do a, a, a week project in a day, basically, or like, or like a, a seven day project in two or three days, you get faster. And a lot of beginner artists see that and they're like, Oh, I'm so slow. And I, I'm always reminding them, no, you're just in your, your first yeah, year. It's just, it just, it takes time. Do you have any things that you do to, that help you speed up that you could maybe suggest to the younger artists? Yeah, for sure. I've learned because 10 years ago, this wasn't around, but Procreate is oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Like I went, once I learned it, I, I sat down a couple of years ago and I said, I've got to learn this app and I'm going to get myself a iPad Pro and I'm going to figure this out. It has changed everything. I make, sometimes if I, when I was doing the house visits, I would take a photo of the room and draw it all out, drag and post photos. And I'd have the room done in five minutes. I'd be like, this is what it's going to look like. Do you like it? Okay, let's book you in. You know, where before I was like, let me go home. I'll get the drawings done for you. I'll send them over. I'll do this. Now it's like instant. I send, I'm there at their house or I'm on the video call and I'll quickly grab some murals that I've done, put it right into their room so they get that visual. Because you know, with clients, the biggest thing is getting the visual for them. Then once you get it, you show them and they're like, oh my God, that's beautiful. That's what my room's going to look like. Okay, can we book? So that's, the Procreate has been phenomenal for me. Um, I'm a projector art artist. I love to project everything. I yeah. don't waste time trying to draw it out. I'm like, I don't have time for that. That saves hours. I mean, <laughs> like, why draw it out when you can project it? Exactly. So it's literally, I do an outline. That's all I do. A quick outline mm -hmm. and then start drawing. So those are things that save time. In my stage now of my career, I have an assistant. So my assistant helps me a lot. Uh, and there's so many artists out there that are looking for work that are young, like students, university students. So I hire them every summer and they are great for speeding things up too, because you can actually be concentrating on the artwork while they're doing all the other things that you need to get done. Can you take the room? Can you prepare the, the, the paints? Can you wash the brushes? Can you whatever? And then I always get them to paint with me, which is great because then they learn but it speeds up. It's like two people working, for, you know, so it really speeds up the process. So that's, that's great too. Okay. Let's stop there real quick. And let's talk about assistance because right now I'm in the point where I'm hiring and I'm hiring like here and there and doing like, and I, with the with the idea of like I want to help some of the artist academy students, I'll bring them in and they, they get some knowledge. I get a little help and like I pay them and, but I've, <coughs> excuse me but I'm like just in like the whole thing of hiring of like do I ha like I've hired more experienced artists to come in and help I've hired like artists that have zero experience and then I've hired the middle and what do you do what, what's your experience in that I've, I've always heard or I've, I'm wondering yeah I mean I had a, a great assistant for about seven years love how did you that. find her she was actually a family friend and she had came to me she was in the art she was at art school and she said to me, you have a really cool job. If you ever need any help, let me know. And this was probably about maybe eight or nine years ago now. And I said to her, you know what? I could actually use you. Like, if you want to come, um, let's try you out. Like, I'll just test you out. And I ended up testing her out and I kept her for like seven years. And then she got married last year or two years ago and moved away. <laughs> so I lost her. <laughs> so I didn't have her anymore. But she was phenomenal help. Like we got to, once you find someone who works really well with you, she, uh, and she did work really well with me because you're like really in close contact when you're painting. Your own. <laughs> you have to be really comfortable with the person. And we did become very comfortable. I trusted her to the point where 
I was almost ready to send her out to murals. Like if I had two jobs because she had gotten that good, she ended up, like I said, got married and moved away. And now she started her own mural business. So I'm so proud of her that she's doing it on her own. You know, she lives in another city and anytime I can help her, like I give her advice. So it's been great for me to think that I've inspired her to, to do murals, you know? So now I just hired someone else again, through word of mouth. Um, person just said hey if you ever need someone my friend is looking for work in the art field or whatever and and I took her on a couple months ago and it's been going really good again she didn't have as much experience but she's very artistic and so I'm finding she picks up very good and it's always good for me to get the younger ones because I'm getting older so they get to do all the physical for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you unpack the car can you grab the ladder can you do this can you do that so that's great but she's been working out really good too right now so I'm gonna hold on to her for as long as I can and uh, how do you pay them so I mean obviously here in, in Canada we have minimum wage I do more than minimum wage um, and uh, we make we agree on a price and then I pay them hourly right okay. so uh, that's the way we do it I do it at least okay and yeah. then I find that if I I do have a job that either paid more so I'll give them a little bonus or you know always treat them nice because yeah, they really help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's finding the whole pay thing too is tough for me because I, I've done like a per project stuff. Like at first I was like, okay, I'm going to pay you as much as I, as much as I think you saved me in hours. So like I, I would pay them that. And then I was like, that's not working. Cause I just, it's taking up too much brain space and I want to make sure that they feel like, you know, we both feel like they're getting enough and and yeah. so we I started doing like a thirty dollars per hour rate yeah. and then but sometimes they're helping a lot and it's like oh they're they're so undervalued at thirty but then sometimes it's like they don't really help at all because i'm I'm teaching them something and they have yeah. to rework it and whatnot and so yeah. I'm like the thirty dollars an hour it's like I'm losing money with that yeah. but they're gaining so I'm like it's just tough <laughs> it is tough yeah it is tough yeah it's not yeah. easy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you have an assistant that works, they, she works with you like Monday through Friday every day. Yeah. Or? So when I, I try now, my norm is I try to paint two or three days a week. Uh, of course okay. there are times where, like I said, over the winter it was crazy busy and I was working every day, Monday to Friday. I don't do weekends anymore. I don't work Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> I try to do Monday to Friday. I like to start at nine o'clock in the morning and, uh, then go to, um, about, uh, maybe three or four. I, I don't like to pay more than six, seven hours in a row. It's sore on the shoulders and you end up having to go to the chiropractor more often. <laughs> but I do find keeping physically fit is a huge part of painting murals because people don't realize that mural painting is extremely like fatigue. It's, it's, it's not easy on the body. So you have to stay fit constantly to be able to, to work, to continue working, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's been really, um, it's been really good that way, you know? Um, yeah. yeah that's I that's so true. I don't know. We we're, were talking about hiring. We're and we're talking, I know. I love it because everything you're saying, I'm just like, yep. Like literally everything. I'm like, you're, you're just a muralist who's a, a few years ahead of me. And it's just really cool to get, you know, your take on it. But a lot of it's so the same. Like you're saying, you know, with your, you know, how you price things and, you know, how like hiring and all of that. I'm just like, yes, <laughs> that's so how it is. And it's so funny because we're, I mean, we're, you're in Canada. I'm in the, the in Missouri in the United States it's not that far apart no, but not, but yeah. still it's like a whole different country we all do the same way <laughs> so. yeah. no it's true yeah I mean we have to kind of uh like be in that same you know idea. Yeah. like we're in that same business right so but I do one thing I do love about social media nowadays is that you realize how many people are out there are doing this job which is like I've never followed more people in the last year that are painting murals all over the world right and yeah and so interesting to see that this has become a full-time job for a lot of people you know so it's great that we can support each other and talk about things and be able to just message each other and say hey what do you think of this situation uh, I, I belong to a mural group on Facebook and people are constantly bringing up situations and discussing discussing stuff so it's it's really it's really good for us to support each other and uh, you know go from there 
Yeah, so true. Awesome. Okay, well, I have one last question for you. If you were just starting out, what would what advice would you give to someone who is just starting out and wanting to make a mural career like yours? What's the one piece of advice for, for the beginner? I would definitely say just do it. Just start. There's yeah. no, don't, I mean, I, I've known people be like, oh, but I've got to register my business name and I have to <laughs> yeah. figure out my taxes number. And I'm like, what? I didn't do any of that. Just start <laughs> painting. That comes later. If your business it really does well, then you worry about all those questions later. But for now, grab your paint, grab a couple paint brushes and just start painting, whether it's on your walls, and I also tell everybody videotape everything because people love watching you paint, you know, so um, just do it. If you love it, just do it. Like yeah. don't ask questions or go. Don't overthink or, it. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> like, cool, really, awesome. I, like at this age, I think about it. Why? Why wait? Like, just do it. Like, really? Right. If you yeah. just try it, see if you're good at it. If you're good at it, the rest will fall into place. I love that. Somebody just commented that said that they they go, I'm starting with a bunch of exclamation points. They're like, yeah. I'm going to start. I'm like, good, great. That's it. That's it. Hopefully okay. I've inspired someone to start. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, definitely. There was, I posted your picture in the, on our Arts Academy Facebook group and people were like, oh, that's so cool. That you're, you're interviewing her. So Aww. you are, yeah, people were really excited about this. So thank you so much for taking your time to come on here and chat about murals with me. I know that you so are many people are going to get welcome. so much for this. Yeah. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, I've so enjoyed connecting with you. And yeah, thank you again. Um, You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll keep in touch. We will. I'll talk to you okay. soon. Bye, guys. Bye.